Hello everyone and welcome to another episode and this week we're talking about why your resin might be the problem that your prints aren't working and it might not be you or anything you're doing wrong. I've talked about in a lot of my episodes why pre-supports have problems or why different issues can cause your prints to fail but we haven't actually discussed that the resin itself might be one of the reasons it's causing this failure and I feel like I needed to bring it up because I just haven't yet. Anyway, enjoy the time lapse of me doing some support, uh, well, I'm not going to say support work, this is just me cleaning up some stuff with island uh, checking and proximity checking from our new uh, Cripple God Foundry collection that we just got uh, this month, and these will be on sale on our site soon, so if you guys are looking to grab some, head on over there and check them out. If you do like the, the sculpts and you're doing your own prints, which I'm assuming you are if you're watching my channel, check them out on my mini factory. They're a great tribe to be a part of. They've got some really great sculpts super high detailed for the size they are you just get amazing amount of detail and they really know what they're doing as far as the pre-supporting and the quality of their work goes definitely highly applaud them check them out great folks um been working with them for a few 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 long months now so <laughs> we hope to continue that for a long time anyway the point of this is not their model or anything i'm doing here but the point of this was to discuss resin with you and if you're familiar with 3d printing you're probably familiar with what's known as an izod test an izod test is something that's used to determine the impact quality strength or tensile strength or bending ability of a particular um, uh, material. In IZOD, usually it's to, it's, it's to measure impact. I believe elongation tests are what they would use to test uh, tensile strength and bending capability, but essentially the IZOD test is a determination to see if a material is good enough for a particular type of task or item, I guess, in, in, in cases where they're using it to make particular types of material or they need the material to be of a particular type of strength. So in the 3D printer world, IZOD tests are no it's no mystery. They're, they're there. Uh, the companies themselves who create the resins definitely are performing tests on the materials for sure. They don't necessarily release it as public information. It's probably in, you know, white papers and other information that you can get access to. But is it going to be on the page where you purchase the stuff? Probably not. The IZOD ratings on most of these resins are probably not going to be the focal point. It's just going to focus on the amazing detail that you're going to be able to get out of it and how cheap it is. Look, if your resin's super cheap, it's not going to do what you want it to do, and it's not going to work the way you want. In a lot of cases, cheap resins don't even cooperate with anti-aliasing settings because they're just cheap and they just don't work. So if you want to get good prints and you want to actually equalize the playing field, don't use a cheap resin. If you're using standard resins because you're concerned with the cost, I fully understand. But in those cases, I mean, use standard resin to make your cheap parts, terrain, bases, things you don't care too much about. But when it comes to your figurines or miniatures or anything that you're collecting or putting on your game table, definitely spend the extra couple bucks and get yourself the higher quality 8K resins. Um, I know Frozen makes a few that are quite good. Soraya Tech has some 8K resins on the market. Anycubic has a few different types of 8K resins, including the standard plus the ABS-like um, the high-speed resin that they have now, which I believe is 12K compatible, I guess, because it was technically made with the M5 and the M5S in mind. But, I digress, again, higher quality means you're going to get a better quality material. Because the higher the quality of the material, the viscosity level is going to be different. In most cases, it's going to be better, which means it's going to flow better, which means you're going to have a better chance at good successful print uh, formation. Then you're talking about the actual elongation strength. That's going to be better in most cases um, because the rigidity is going to be reduced. Standard resins have a pretty high rigid factor where they're, they're very stiff. And so that's fine. It's fine for 3D printing if all you're going to do is put it up on a shelf and never touch it. But to be honest, that material can become brittle. Um, it can be over cured and really just, just not... Yeah, you're just not going to have a good time with it overall. And... As a 3D printer who prints for people who buy my prints, I want my qual I want my material to last a long time. I want it to be good. I want it, if they accidentally drop that thing, I don't want it to shatter into a billion pieces. And with most standard resins, how rigid they are, how hard they are, that is usually what's going to wind up happening. And in a moment here, we're going to bring up some charts, and I'm going to kind of go over the differences um, that we were just talking about. And we'll, again, probably mention this IZOD test to you. <laughs> and I'm going to bring it up a few more times throughout the course of this video. Uh, in the meanwhile, I hope you're enjoying the time lapse of uh, the croc there being uh, checked out and having his islands kind of uh, fixed. We're going to come back with a few more guys on the plate, and we'll be doing a slice at the end of it.
Anyway, the elongation and Izod impact strength test, as we go on here, the blue mark, the, the blue graph there is the elongation, where the orange uh, graph there is the impact or Izod strength. Um, and that's measured in percentage. And then you have your uh, the strength measurement there on the other side. So essentially what you have here is you have high temp resins have very poor impact. Those are going to shatter in most cases. Standard resins, still not really great, still on the poor side. Even tough resins like ABS-like resins still have a fairly weak IZOD impact. It's not until you start getting into durable, um, where we do have uh, you know more durable resins, like, for example, the DLP Craftsman resin. It's very durable. I've done many drop tests on pieces, and they have survived from variable heights. Yes, eventually they will break, they will stress fracture, um, things like that. But the level of durability is almost, I'm going to say it's about 20 times what it is for the high temp and about four, I expect about maybe 10 times what it is from the standard. Because um, you're look. I mean, it's, it's standard, it's not even 30. And so, yeah, you're, you're looking at a massive difference in strength and elongation. But the elongation, as you can see, it still suffers a bit, even on the durable side, but it's so much improved from your standard elongation. The standard elongation is about 10. High temperature is about maybe 4 or 5. The durable one's about 50, maybe 45. And you have, it, it makes such a difference when you're trying to remove supports, having that extra pull so the object just doesn't snap. And if you've worked with standard cheap resins, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Happens all the time. Um, again, this is another way to look at it with the uh, different type of charting, essentially. But what this is showing you is the difference between the standard, tough, high temperature, and durable resins um, across the board. And, 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 and again, this is a general study. So this is not related to any particular brand. This is not any cubic information. This is more or less resins across the board. And these materials, you know, as I said, they test them for different types of things, like we have elongation, flex, tensile strength, tensile modulus, um, temperature. And again, your high temp one, gonna have the best temperature resistance. Your durable stuff, your tough stuff, it's gonna have the best elongation and strength. And I think, you know, but again, this is why I said it's not your it's not you. It's your resin. Cheap resins just aren't that strong. Now we can go and, and argue that, you know, okay, if we compare standard, let's say, to standard plus, which is a little bit of an upgrade, the bending modulus doesn't make enough of an increase. The extensibility is massive because you go from an eight percent to an eighteen point two percent, so you're doubling and a half a dub, you're more than doubling there. And the viscosity is improved as well. Um, but the temperature rating is, is, is exactly the same. And if you look at the example graph there as well, you can see that there is some slight differences in hardness, which of course will affect the rigidity, uh, bending resistance and stuff like that, which again is tense, you know, it's, that's the bending modulus and the um, elongation strength. Now, as far as the resins that we use here, I talk about it all the time. We use DLP Craftsman. We get great results out of it. If you don't have an AnyCubic printer, I still recommend it. It's probably one of the nicest 8K resins on the market, and it works really good for any DLP printer. Anyway, that is about it for me going on and on and on about the quality of different resins and why you should use them. Um, enjoy the slice with some calm music, and we'll see you all guys uh, in the next episode. This was just a little short one for just me reminding you. Remember, guys. It's not you, it's your resin. Take care.